Good evening, folks of Night and Nightmares. Tonight's review will be a rehash of one of my first Halloween reviews, the Disney Halloween Treat. <laughs> and this time I'll add a little bit more fear into your Halloween nights. This is not what I'm gonna do. <laughs> yeah, don't worry, that voice. Ugh, it's hard to. Enjoy. Now, I know you guys have heard me doing a Disney Halloween treat a long time ago, one of my longer reviews. If you want to check it out, go on. But this one's going to be a bit more different because I have a bit more scription, a better development, and plus, I got better lines. Now, the episode is narrated by a jack-o'-lantern puppet, voiced by Hal Douglas, featured a companion of classic cartoon shorts involving spooky and supernatural themes that were excellent. The first cartoon of our daily fun is the greatest scene from the the Sword in the Stone, where we see the great Madame Mim fighting the great magician Merlin. They go out for a fight, but in the end, it is the blue wizard that wins. Purple lost, and in the end, he lost almost his life to the fierce dragon. That's Madame Mim, but in the end, she got withered and beaten. Then again, watch the movie, watch. Then there's Night on Bold Mountain! It all starts when he summons all of his greets and creatures and monsters and creatures. Very creepy. Now, if you've noticed, there are two different uh, Disney Halloween treats. This is a different one. The first one was hosted by Mike Eisner. But this one is hosted by a pumpkin voiced by Hal Douglas. Who voiced it? I'm not going to say anything until we feel it to the very end. We see the demon waken. A lord playing with his trolls and demons to the point of killing them and then bringing them back. Which always scared me as a little girl. I swear. I know some people say that he was the freaking devil. Many people even said that Walt Disney even called him the devil. But no, he's called Chernobyl, a slab of his mythology. My thoughts on him is always a bit, well, creepy. Sorry, folks. I had to uh, close the door. Hey folks, back to our little Halloween review. If you hear any back noise, it's just yeah, things happening. Uh, next is a clip from Pluto Sweater. You know the cartoon where Minnie gives him the sweater. Unfortunately, it starts to swing, and he actually put it on his head. Got so wet, swing because it didn't look like a mask of a monster. Next clip is from Mickey's Parrot, 1938. That when a parrot is delivered into uh, Mickey's house without him knowing it, he thought it was going to be a burglar or a killer. But in the end, it was just a parrot. But then, then we see the classic. The classic Donald Duck in the Gorilla, 1944. We see his nephews and him hearing a gorilla on the news. And then the boys try to scare him, but in the end, it backfired because the real gorilla came. <laughs> And Donald Duck thought he had to save the day. But in the end, it was his nephews that saved the day. I mean, seriously, come on. Who are you going to thank to that beat the gorilla? That duck? <laughs> Give me a break. Who we do the movie are way more smarter. And then we fear the most darkest cartoon I ever watched. Pluto's Judgment Day. Oh, I call it that way. Judgment anyway. We all see that Pluto's chasing the poor little cat and got in trouble. With, of course... With his owner, which is really sad. And we see all these colors, the dark. Walt Disney did a really good job with his animators with this cartoon. I found it very classic. It was a very awesome style and all that because when you see the animation on the judge, just it hits you like a <laughs> hits you like a not like a fart, but it hits you like a brick. All I can say is great animation, guys. Next is Puss Cafe. Now that one seems a little mixed, uh, my thoughts on it, because I never really liked that one. Boo! Hey, hey, no booing at me. Oh, okay, stop it. Seriously, girls? 
Sorry. <sighs> Push Cafe, right. About those two cats were trying to get food from Pluto, but in the end, he got scared. Then cat that Pluto when little Fie, little, what was he called? What was his name? Fiogri? No. Mom. Let me look. She's gonna get the script. The little kitten, it's, uh, um, Fioga? Mm, enough. We'll just call him the little cutie. That's what he's called, anyway. <laughs> Any case, then our next cartoon is a dear classic Disney film. Captain Hook in Neverland faces off of Peter Rabbit. Sorry, noises. Peter Pan. Peter Pan is chasing him around the ride getting chased, but in the end, wham! Right in the butt next with the sword. <laughs> he gets really hurt and falls in the water and gets chased by the crocodile. I mean, seriously, what a classic battle between a little boy and an old man. Puh. Then we get Cruella de Vil, the evilest queen, the rottenest thing. She's gotta be never up, let's never release in our. One hundred dollar Mason's movie. She tries to kill a group of puppies trying to make a large fur coat. Now that's nuts. I say that is super nuts. But what do you expect? The evil is within all of us. In the end, boom, gets defeated. And as for the evil queen from Snow White Seven Dwarfs, in the end she tries to turn dear old Snow White to a sleeping dead body, but unfortunately got out beat it by the seven dwarves once more. She's sweeping up through the dungeon. We see a dead body or two. Oh, only the skeleton, though. Vasty, how drunk! As she goes through the swamp, then gets a little Snow White to give her. Honestly, Snow White's supposed to be 14 in this. Seriously, when I was young, I thought she was like, I don't know, 18? But no, she's actually 14 years old. She's the youngest friend in Disney World. It's really young. But now there's a new one. In any case, our next little creeps, or should I say, two creeps, I'm and Sai and I'm, the first Chinese animal characters we got from Lady and the Tramp. They really got Lady in trouble with their owner. I mean, come on, this is a cat lover, not a dog lover. They did everything they could to get in trouble, even tried to kill the fish, the bird at half point. I mean, who has a cat? Who has a fish and a and a bird with a dog, which is kind of good. But if you have a cat, never let them go near. Otherwise, they turn into a lay of fish. In any case, our last create the last creature feature of the night is Ichabod Crane, Headless Horseman. As he begins in the party, Ichabod's ready to get ready to eat his food until John Little Bones tells him the story of the Headless Horseman, and it begins to a whole giant sequence of singing, telling the story that he was eating. He's a monster, a hessian that will cut your head off and go out there alone. The way only to survive him is to go to the bridge. But sadly, Ichabod Crane went through the night being afraid of this creature of the night. He um, then... <laughs> then he showed up and chased the poor man down the road. Down to the spooky ooky woods. Until, wham! The pumpkin was thrown at him. And that is the end of our story. So, this is called Disney Halloween Treat. There's a difference between a Disney Halloween Treat, because I technically did review a Disney Halloween Treat. In any case, there's a lot of differences. This is the one, but for a double feature, I'll try to do that a different time, though. It's time for me to turn into a bat and fall asleep, because I'm half bat pony. Again, I should, try to do, I should do a costume of me as a bat pony. And again, it would take me a long time to do it. So, folks, enjoy your evening and watch out for the vampires. You're in for a big bite! Before I go, I did promise to do this. How Douglas, who is the voice for a little creation of a show? There's not much to him, actually. There's not much to him. 
As we as all I know, the cut over his voice in when John and Floyd claimed that he actually created the cash phrase. Oh night. Disney Hall Retreat and Disney Halloween Disney Channel, Walt Disney, through 19 and 87, in 2002, and the History Channel. He did open voice narrate a lot of things for historic, significant sports and all that. just want to give a little education before I go and hang my wings, if you get the joke. Uh, so far, that's all I know. But he was an excellent voice. Too bad he died of the age of 89. By cancer. And this is no joke. Cancer is one of the most deadliest illnesses ever. So be careful, guys. Cancer is no lack of matter. It will kill you! Kill you! Okay, my brony watchers, remember to subscribe to my channel. And remember, there's always more with me than meets the eye. Or, should I say, more than meets a white rose. Night, folks. Hee <laughs> hee.